Father, we just thank you so very much for all of our viewers, and I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you surround them with your presence. God, that they will say, oh yes, God, God, I give you my life today, and I want your Holy Spirit to lead me and to be with me, God, every aspect of the day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May they have ears to hear, God, what your Spirit is saying. May your Holy Spirit move upon them, guide them, lead them, just be with them, God, and surround them, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus yes. Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. That same day, two of them were going to a village called Emus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that happened. And as they talked and deliberated, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. So first I want to just say this. Um, you know, we're, we're talking about two of the disciples that now are, are um, going to a village. They're walking together. It's funny how when Jesus was alive with the disciples, he taught them to go out two by two. Um, and, you know, um, this is just a sidebar because we're not talking about um, two by two. But I felt like this point was important as we're reading this because there's two of them walking to get together. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And it's important. It's just like how Pastor Chris and I right now, there's two of us. We're, we're together. We're unified. We're discussing this message as one sure. together. Um, there's power in agreement. And I believe that when Jesus is sending us out two by two, um, that's for our protection. Okay. That's for our um, knowing that, you know, um, God is on our side and two by two, we're going to be in agreement. So here these guys, these two are walking together and they're talking, right? And in verse 15, it says, they talked and deliberated. Jesus himself came up and they and walked along with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. So they did not recognize that it was Jesus yet. Okay. And he asked them, what are you discussing so intently as you walk along? Um, they stood still with sadness on their faces. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in recent days? What things? He asked. The events involving Jesus of Nazareth. They answered, this man was a prophet, powerful in speech and action before God. And all the people, our chief priests and rulers, delivered him up to the sense of death and they crucified him. But we were hoping he was the one who would redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is the third day since these things took place. Verse 22, furthermore, some of our women astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, but they did not find his body. They came and they told us they had seen a, a vision of angels who said that Jesus was alive. And then some of our companions went to the tomb and they found it just as the women had described. But him they did not see. So how many of us, uh, you know, last week's episode we were talking about being doubtful, right? So how many of us that if someone said something, would we believe them right away? You know, right? Like I didn't see it from myself, but all this, all this evidence is, is around me and it seems like it's true, but I didn't see it myself. Like I want to see it too, you know? Um, it's almost like this uh, inside can start uh, like welling up inside of you feeling like I want to experience this too, right? Absolutely. And, and that's good. That's the spirit of the Lord stirring that in them, okay? So, um, it says here, I'm going to go in verse, uh, 22. I'm going to go to, uh, repeating furthermore, some of our women astounded us. 
They were at the tomb early this morning, but they did not find his body. They came, they told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said that Jesus was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and they found that just as the women had described, but him they did not see. They did not see Jesus, but yet Jesus is right there. Verse 25, then Jesus said to them, O foolish ones. How slow are your hearts to believe all that the prophets have spoken? Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and then to enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was written in all the scriptures about himself. How precious that Jesus would know that they are um, perplexed and they're in a situation where they had great hope that Jesus would come and redeem Israel, the Bible says. But I think that they were probably had a perception of it. He was going to come in like an army and he's going to say, okay, you Roman soldiers, get out of the way and, you know, come, come up about and just do you know take over and and haste you know stop oppressing the, the 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 people of Israel maybe they expected it in a certain way and it just did not happen that way god had a way that he wanted to give them eternal life yes. in jesus name so that that could really um be a situation that we all are believing god but it's not happening in the way we really hoped Correct. or even had a perception of what we thought you know maybe we had hey it could happen in either three or four ways and none of those ways it's happening but you see progress that something is happening and then Jesus says, hold it. I'm going to give them the word of God, what was written about him in the scriptures. That's what verse 27 says. Um, so now we're reading in verse um, uh, 25 when he says, Jesus said, O foolish ones, how slow are your hearts to believe all the prophets have spoken. I want, I want to say this. He starts going into the scripture verses that are talked about him in the Old Testament. He's talking about how he fulfilled the scriptures. And that is God's reassurance to us when he's giving us his word. He reminds us of his word because that's what he's doing here. So I'm going to go down here to verse 30. While he was reclining at the table with them, he took bread, spoke a blessing, and he broke it and he gave it to them. Verse 31, then their eyes were open and they recognized Jesus. They recognized Jesus. Lord, help us to recognize your presence. God, there are things, God, that are happening even now. And you're letting us know you're right here with us. And we don't recognize that you were in it. You were in it, God. You were there all along. So open our eyes, God. And help us, God, right now, that when you remind us of your word, you remind us of your promises, help us, oh God, to be reassured that you're with us, oh God, that you love us. So when their eyes were open and they recognized Jesus, it says he disappeared from their sight. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think that you've seen it in the movies. It's happening for real. <laughs> he was there and then they couldn't see him. And it says here in verse 32, they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us as he spoke with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? This is why you hear Pastor Chris and I constantly say, read the Bible. Get in the Bible. Read the Bible every single day because it is God's truth. It is his love letter to us. And it says here that, um, verse 33, they got up that very hour, they returned to Jerusalem, that there they found the eleven, and those with them gathered together, and they said, the Lord has indeed risen and has appeared to Simon. Verse 35, 
Then the two told what had happened on the road and how they had recognized Jesus in the breaking of bread. Absolutely. Because what he does is he reassures us with that burning in our hearts. It's not an emotional response. Amen. It's not an emotional response. It's that inner, inner presence of him. That's right. On the inside. Jesus on the inside, right? Working on the outside. Oh, what a change in our lives. That's right. <laughs> what we're trying to say is that the Bible is truth. And when you are in a situation such as these individuals are in, go back to the Word. Because Jesus himself opened up the Word to them. And it brought them back to the truth. Because they were obviously in a lot of different feelings going on. Yes. But we have the Holy Spirit. And we have to realize that that sense in our hearts could be God's presence saying, hey, I want to spare you. Amen. Hey, go do, do this. I want you to be blessed. That's true. Um, we have to be so sensitive to God's presence. presence. And when he puts that in our hearts, and he will remind you of his word. Is it lining up with his word? Is it... You know, whatever you're sensing this burning, does it line up with the things of God? Amen. Is it putting God first or not? That's what we have to be sensitive to regarding your hearts being burned inside or there's a burning within your hearts. Lord Jesus, I pray every single one of our viewers and our listeners in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, would say, you know, that has been happening to me. And I'm grateful for the times when I have listened to it because it certainly have led me down the right way. But Lord, for those that are saying, man, I wish I would have, let them not beat, beat themselves down, God, but let them say, Father, forgive me. That was a missed opportunity. I messed up. But Lord, I thank you. May you forgive me of all my sins. God, help me to dust off my knees spiritually and get back up again. That in the name of Jesus Christ, that no matter what or how I may be feeling, in all situations, let me fall back on your word. Let me think about the Amen. truth of your word yes. and be led by the power of the yes, Holy Lord. Spirit. Yes, Lord. And not by anything else, not by anything else, not by anything else, not by anyone else, not by circumstances, not by feelings, not by thoughts, but the Holy Spirit, may you penetrate my heart and speak to my heart. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us. We pray blessings upon you. That's we right. pray that you guys will send out a comment, like this page, um, and subscribe to it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, guys, for following us on all our social media pages. And also, uh, we have a podcast, Resplendency Life. If you guys have never checked it out, make sure you do that. And I also want to thank those of you that read my blogs on letstakeamoment.com. And also, you guys can follow me at Examine Moments. On behalf of all Resplendency, don't forget to do this very thing. Stand, Stand out, out and shine, shine for Jesus Christ. For Jesus. God bless you.